What is up everybody? We are back with another fly tying tutorial. Today we are starting a new series for the month of June and the month of May. We will be doing um, different var variations of dry flies. Um, now that we are in dry fly, fly fishing season for May and June, uh, we are starting this series kicking it off with tying one of our favorite types of patterns and for one of our favorite mayflies, the Hexagenia lumbata, or the hex fly. Um, this is a North American fly. It is fished um, in the Midwest, around the Great Lakes region uh, especially. So if you don't know what this fly is, it's one of the largest mayflies or the largest mayfly that hatches in North America. So we're gonna get into this tutorial and kick it off. Um, you can see here the picture of the mayfly um, that we're going to be tying and here is a little bit more of a close-up of the fly. So the first thing is that we want to tell all of you that we are putting the, the fly tying materials now in the description so that way it makes it easier for you to go back to the video and um, figure out exactly what you need if you want to start tying these flies. It can be tied in any color uh, variation and variety um, for everything for green drakes to brown drakes, um, basically any any mayfly. Just adjust the size of your hook and that will adjust the size of your body. Um, we will be also tying some extended body uh, isonychias or isos because um, that hatch happens around the same time as this this hatch and um, we're going to be tying some of those in, in extended bodies also so we might we might show you those but we're going to try to keep this series going with different variations of dry flies and styles from parachutes um, to uh, traditional deer hair body flies um, to dubbing style body flies um, and we're going to be getting into all of those so follow along subscribe uh, to the channel uh, hit the bell icon so you know when we go live and you can see all of these uh, fly tying tutorials happen. So this fly starts off with a very traditional material uh, for the tail and that is moose mane. Uh, we're going to go through one series of showing you how to tie this body and then we're going to get into tying the rest of the fly. So let me pull this fly here out of the vise. And let's get um, an unusual type of tool if you've never tied an extended body before. Uh, this is just a embroidery needle. And what I did was I took a pair of um, wire cutters and I cut off the eye so that way I can get um, this further into the jaws of my vise. So if you're just starting to tie extended bodies, that's just a tip that we like. Um, because we use this flat side of the, the needle to sit into our jaws. So we're going to put that into our jaws and just for our tension. And make sure it doesn't wobble up and down like this. So just adjust your jaws until you get a really tight fit. That looks pretty good there. So let me go ahead and adjust this for you. All right, we have our needle in our vise. We're gonna take our yellow 70 denier thread and we're gonna try to fit the thread right near the very tip of the needle. So just get as many wraps as it takes to secure that in one small spot like so. And we're just going to leave that hang there for a second. Um, so something I want to show you as a little tip is we use this um, CDC hackle tool or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the Swiss CDC um, tool. And we have our moose mane here in, in there. And I wanted to show you how we prep this material um, before we add it to our... Um, our fly. So we take a large size hair stacker and we will put the tips 
into the hair stacker. We've cut just a basic clump of this material. I'm going to put that into our hair stacker and we are going to just stack that material the best we can. You can see I have my wing materials and my hackles all laid out, uh, all laid out here. So we're going to stack those down until we get our tips aligned. We're going to pull the tips of these fibers out. And for a rule of thumb on any tail, the length of the tail fibers are the same length as the body. So once we get to uh, the body, we'll show you uh, the length of our foam that we have, but I'm going to trim off this right over top of my waste basket. And then I'm going to take these fibers, put them right back into my CDC tool, but I'm going to put them in tips first. And when I do that, the tool holds my, my uh, tail fibers in a nice alignment like that. And then I can set that off to the side um, to be able to pull my uh, fibers out when I as I need them. Okay. Give me one second here. Sorry about this. Okay, so we're back to our needle here. So I'm gonna pull out just a few of those, those fibers from my CDC tool. You really only need like three or four or five. Um, it doesn't really matter how many tails you use. Um, I usually put in more than I need because I can always trim them out. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay my fibers right on top of the thread on my needle. And I'm gonna tie that down just like so. Then I'm going to come in and trim off my excess thread and a little bit. I'm going to leave a little bit of the fibers um, so that way it gets tied in with the body. We went ahead and we prepped our foam pieces that we're going to be using for the actual body. And they are roughly about an inch or a little bit more than an inch long. And the way we cut these is we just used a basic piece of two millimeter foam and we cut this on an angle. I'm going to show you with a pen here. So we build this taper. We build a taper into the into the foam body like so. So you can see how there's a taper that goes from where the tail side of this uh, body is going to be to the uh, the front of the thorax <clears throat> or the beginning of, of the the chest of the of the fly and we cut two pieces like this and that's what we got here so we're going to take one piece of the foam that we've cut we're going to lay it right on top and I leave um, the end of the foam right at the end of the needle so that way the rest of this is all going to be with inside the body And I just get two or three wraps, hold that foam in place, take my other piece, and I'm going to put it underneath. Like so, two or three wraps. And then the next wrap is going to go around just the needle. And then I bring that thread back. And as we come forward, we want to make sure that we are creating not only a taper of the width of the fly, but also the, the size of the segments. So the first segment is gonna be small. We'll do two or three turns on that. I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna keep it around the same size. The next one I might make a little bit bigger, and it's, it's very, very uh, um, minimal as far as like increasing the size. So I'm slowly increasing the size. I'm going around both pieces of foam, I'm going around my needle once, 
and then I'm going around my foam again two or three times. And you want to make sure that uh, you turn your thread, show you, you want to turn your thread counter uh, counterclockwise to kind of flatten your thread out because if you have your thread uh, too too tight it will cut through your foam so be aware of that so we're going to finish out this body and we can usually whip through one of these in under under a minute since we're trying to show you this tutorial here and I don't really care about how many body segments I go up as long as the length is correct for me. Um, that's the most important part. This fly and this hatch happens at night. Um, so the two most important factors are size and shape. And that's all that really matters. Um, you know, daytime, it, it, it changes. We'll talk a little bit about how, that, uh, how trout's vision is affected. Um, when we do fish these flies because we fish them generally after 10 p.m. So now we're going to take our large uh, whip finish tool and we are going to whip finish the full length of the body at the top of the last segment we just tied in. So three or four whip finishes. Lock that down. Grab your tying scissors and cut your thread. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide this background so you can see the fly better. All right, so we have our body on our needle here. And I am going to make sure that the top of my body is facing up and the seams of the two pieces of foam are on the sides of the needle. I'm going to grab my brown uh, Copic marker. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go on both sides of the top of the fly. And then I usually like to just very lightly touch the center like that. Just gives it a nice brown and yellow uh, segmented, uh, seg segmented look to the fly. The next thing that I will use is some UV resin. The Solaris uh, Flex, or Solaris, however you like to say it, I always mispronounce it. UV Cure, it's a flex formula. So we're gonna take this and I'm going to lay, I'm gonna put it right on the sides of the seams of the foam. This adds a little bit of, uh, a little bit of extra durability, I think, to the fly when a fish chomps on it. And then also, um, I like to shape my bodies because every mayfly that floats down the river doesn't look exactly the same to a fish, but the only consistencies would be the size, the length, um, and the shape of, of the, the flies, right? But some bodies are curved, some are flat. So what I do is I put a couple um, little beads of that UV resin on the fly, and then when you grab, grab your, your fly here by the tail and also grab it by the front when you go to slide it off and you pull at the same time so that way that body slides right off of your needle just like that and then I'll take my um, UV light I'm just using a flashlight or a torch here bright UV and then I'm going to bend the tail in a way if you can see and try to do it here bend the tail in a way I generally do this on the the bench or the vice or the the base I'm going to bend my tail and then I'm going to hit it with my light and that'll help just give it a little bit of shape if you can see that so we have a little bit of a natural shape of a tail being or the body and the tail being held up, just like a mayfly. So it just gives it a little bit more realism. I like to put as much realism into my flies as I possibly can. All right, so then the next thing 
that I actually forgot to list on the, the description, but I do use a little bit of super glue, okay? Because durability, I want to use this fly maybe all night long to catch multiple fish. So I'm going to put as much durability into my flies as I possibly can. I'm sure all of you think the same. Um, fly shops don't think that. They want you to come back and buy more, right? So we're going to put a little bit of super glue just on the base of these tails, right where those two pieces of foam are coming together. And then I'm going to take a pair of tweezers, if I could find them. And I'm going to, because we need to apply pressure to the super glue to set it, so I'm going to squeeze right together, and I'm going to put a lot of pressure, and I'm going to hold those pieces of foam together, and that's going to lock those tails in, and they will not come out unless they break. So Moose Man's pretty, pretty durable stuff. Um, you can use uh, Cogdo de Leon um, for the tail fibers as well, but I like to use the, the traditional um, Michigan style um, moose mane for my tails because they're hollow and they also add a little bit of buoyancy to the fly. So after I squeeze that together and I know that the glue is set up, I'll come in with my my scissors and I will trim I will trim that tail to, to make sure it has a continuous taper all the way through the body. So I'll just trim the foam near the tail and that just gives it that full body segment and taper all the way to the tail. And this is a true to size um, mayfly. So, like I said, we're fishing this fly at night. The most important part is making sure the size and the shape is correct um, because the fish are keying in on, on those sizes and shapes. So then we're going to move on to adding our hook. We'll take our needle and we'll stick it off to the side. Adjust our jaws for our hook. And we will get our clink style scud hook into this vise. This is a size 6. Um, I also use the fire hole um, size 8. And that is, it's roughly around the same size as this, this hook. So every hook company isn't exactly the same. But you can see those are fairly similar. This is just a little bit smaller and a barbless hook has a little bit more of a um, curvature to it. I really like the fire hole barbless and that's what I fish um, for the most part. And there is not any difference on holding power having a barb on your hook. So if you're a catch and release fisherman, I suggest you use the barbless. In fact, let's go ahead and just we'll tie on the barbless so you can see proportion size of this hook here. So this is a, I, I believe it's, I'm sorry, I think it's a size eight um, fire hole. I use six or eight uh, depending on um, the size of the, the hook or the body that I'm, I'm putting on here. And the way this is going to be fastened is the foam is going to be tied in at the same point near where the hackle is going to be tied in and the wing is going to be tied in. We'll go ahead and we'll get our thread onto our hook. And we're only taking the thread back to not quite the point of the, of the hook shank. I'm going to get, sometimes I'll put the wing in before the body, but we're going to just do the bottom part of the foam first and tie that down in and I'm do it all the way back to the body and then I'm going to take my uh, pre-prepped pre grizzly hackle feather 
And the way that I trimmed these is I trimmed off any of the webby fibers and then I stripped back a portion so we have some small barbs sticking out on each side of this feather and then that'll give it a lot better holding power um, inside the body of the fly so it doesn't pull away. So I'll put both colors in, traditional grizzly and this brown or ginger colored grizzly. And I will tie those in don't want my, there we go, keep my eye free and clear. So I got those, those feathers tied in and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to wrap one or two wraps behind the feathers to try to get them to stick out straight towards the camera. Because as we wrap those or palmer those onto our, our hook shank, we want them to, to stick, those barbs to stick straight out. So I will go ahead and tie down my foam and I'm doing it right on the edge here. So when we wrap those feathers we're gonna wrap around this body. And then I have some poly wing. This is just basic poly wing material. Um, you can get it in a package like this. You can get it in um, a pair post, a pair post style. Uh, you can use that. We like to use this uh, floating poly, polypropylene. And you can just use that. It's, it's all the same. Um, as long as it's got some flotation, you're going to probably put some gink or whatever on this fly anyways. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to wrap my one, my one and a half or one inch section of poly wing around the thread itself like that. I'm going to bring it up to the top and place it. Give it a couple wraps behind, a couple wraps in front. I have that sitting right on that foam. And then I'm going to figure eight one time just to get that separation that I want. I'm going to grab each one of these wings as I'm doing my figure eight to hold them in place and then wrap down to the eye of my hook. Now, this is the time if you want to add an additional piece of material. Also, I didn't put into the description. I'll, I'll go back and I'll do that later on. This here is a, um, a UV glow type of material. And all this is, is it, it's for a little bit more visual for the, the fishermen since we are making these casts in the dark. We're making these casts in the dark, so... Um, this is something extra that I add into some of my flies and you can do the same thing. Wrap it around your thread and you can bring it right up between the wings. So if you were going to do that right after you did your figure eight wrap that material and put that right here between the wings. So I'm being very cooperative. I'm actually going to take some of that out. And we just get this um, this little bit of material. I found it on Amazon. Just search for UV, uh, UV material or what, what not. If I, if I can find it in my, my history, I'll, I'll drop that into the, uh, the description on YouTube as well. Okay, so it's, it's basically like a little post. And then we don't want a whole lot. We don't want a whole lot, um, just enough to see where we cast so we can get a good idea of the, the distance of where that fish is. A lot of times by the time you make a, a few false casts, you can just barely see it when it hits the water. And then we're going to take our feathers. You can do these one at a time or you can do them together. Um, I'll, I'll use a pair of hackle pliers and I'll, I'll show you, I'll do it one, of it one at a time. Just grab the tip of your feather, bring it around underneath your fly. I'm going to trap my other feather. 
by putting a couple wraps of the Grizzly behind. And be, be careful while you're doing this. This is where you can break these feathers. Um, if you were worried about durability, you can put a little bit of a drop, couple drops of super glue where the stem is going to be hitting that fly. And I'm going to go behind it and then I'm going to go in front all the way up to the eye. Capture it with my thread. And I'm going to go over to the next feather, grab it with my hackle pliers. And as I bring this feather up and through, I will wiggle it so I'm, I can get less fibers trapped down with my stem. I lost it there. And I'll bring that right up through the grizzly. I love fishing this this pattern and especially because when you're fishing a dry fly one thing I find is the more of that hook you can have below the surface of the water the better the chances you're gonna you're gonna hook up on that fish. I'm gonna trim out the tag end of my fibers there of my feather and I'm just gonna pull all of the fibers back and I'm going to build up a little bit of a thread head and then whip finish just like so and I'll tell you what building durability right so a little bit of Sally's hard as nails and I'm going to keep it on my thread so I'm gonna I'm gonna lay some of that on my thread. So I got some some beads there, and then pull my fibers back. And I'm gonna wrap it around my thread head I just made. And you can do that before you whip finish. And that's just gonna help put a little bit more uh, durability for those large brown trout you're gonna catch in the teeth of those fish. So let's talk about the wing and the wing shape. This one's not too bad, but I'll pull my wings together and you want them roughly around, I go a little bit shorter, but maybe about the length of the body because that's how you get the right proportions. I'll separate out my wings like so. And then I will kind of flatten them because there's a little bit of transparency. This is the second color phase of this mayfly where the wings um, become clear um, beyond that dun color. So you can tie these with a dun color wing, um, a little bit darker on the body, maybe a little bit darker brown or use like a grayish tone um, marker on the belly. That'll really kind of match the naturals um, for the first color phase of this fly. And then um, I'll pinch my wings together like this See if I can do this. Pinch your wings together so they're they're flattened out, and then I'll come back behind the fly and I will trim an angle into my wing. Like that. And that just gives it more of that natural shape to your wing. And that's it. Um, that's your extended body mayfly. Um, you can tie that, like I said, in multiple different species of mayflies and colors. And I really thank you guys for following along. I hope you're enjoying these videos. I'm going to keep this series of dry flies going. Um, so that way, uh, through the months of May and June, when we have more dry fly action, um, you guys can capitalize on some of that uh, really fun surface fly fishing action. So join us again. I'm going to be doing these at least once a week. I'm going to try to aim for more. I've been really busy lately, so sorry. I haven't, I haven't uh, posted another video since last, I think, Tuesday. I'm going to do these, like I said, at least every Tuesday or Wednesday and on some Friday evenings. You can join us live. 
Um, once we start building a little bit of a, commu a community with you guys, we will um, start posting ahead of schedule the flies that we're going to be building so you can get those materials ahead of time and tie them live with us so you can ask questions in our chats and and yeah so check us out on youtube check us out on uh instagram tle media on instagram you can see all the flies that we tie um fish that we catch on these flies and again we thank you for joining us come back again um for the next live stream live